Welcome back. Amid a week of escalating chaos among Republican lawmakers, including several threats of physical violence, the House has recessed early for its Thanksgiving break after GOP members of the Conservative Freedom Caucus revolted and tanked a vote in the lower chamber yesterday. Chamber yesterday. Now, the vote ruled to move forward with one of the 12 appropriations bills that the House must pass each year. Freedom Caucus members told reporters their rebellion was due to their frustrations over the clean government funding bill passed in the House with support from a bunch of Democrats on Tuesday. That did not include spending cuts nor any conservative policy add-ons. They also said the group's policy priorities are essentially being ignored by Republican leadership. Joining us now, senior congressional reporter for Punchbowl News, Andrew Desiderio. So let's, Andrew, let's temper flaring, people threatening violence. As far as I know, you haven't challenged anyone to a fight. Please don't. Um, but let's start <laughs> with the uh, stopgap funding bill. It, some good news, I guess. Pass the House, pass the Senate. The government's not going to shut down. But tell us, though, a little bit more about why some Republicans are so angry about it. That's right. So, you know, obviously, good sign. Everybody's going to get to go home for Thanksgiving. There won't be a government shutdown. But what we're doing essentially is kicking the can on appropriations, on other must pass legislation, uh, on the national security supplemental for Israel and Ukraine and Taiwan, for example, uh, into the winter months. So, to be frank with you, John, December is going to be pretty nuts. Uh, January and February are also going to be nuts because you're going to have two separate government shutdown deadlines, uh, one in mid-January and then another uh, in early February for more government, government agencies. Um, what conservatives don't like about this is that it didn't cut spending, right? But the point of a CR is that you're kind of punting and, and buying yourself some time. Um, conservatives and, and, you know, some in-house leadership alike actually believe that this sets them up to secure some policy wins uh, and some spending cuts uh, when teeing up against the Senate on appropriations in early 2024. I don't really see that happening because none of these issues that they're dealing with right now are going away anytime soon. The Senate has a bipartisan process on appropriations. The House is struggling to even pass uh, these funding bills with just Republican votes. Uh, so, you know, the idea that things are going to get better for House Republicans over the next couple months is, I think, a bit far-fetched. Yeah, now this pushes it into an election year as well. So let's talk about this blowback here. First of all, you know, we know that Speaker McCarthy lost his job because he passed a vote to, to pass a bill to keep the government open. And it only takes one, one member to start the process potentially against the speaker too. So two parter here. Speaker Johnson, is his job in jeopardy? And secondly, in order to placate them, do we think that means he's going to go full speed ahead on an impeachment inquiry into President Biden? Look, I think those two questions are absolutely related, right? Number one, he's not in jeopardy as of this moment, right? Because conservatives are giving him a longer leash than they ever gave to Kevin McCarthy. That that has borne out to be true, uh, even during just his short tenure as Speaker of the House. Secondly, on impeachment, you know, this is obviously a big, big priority of the far right. And it is an effort by Speaker Johnson to tell conservatives, you know, hey, I'm doing what I have to do in my leadership role to try to keep the government open. Uh, I have to work with Democrats to do that, obviously to get anything through the Senate, but here's some red meat that I can I can throw you. And that's kind of what we saw yesterday when he issued this statement saying that, you know, they're full speed ahead on their impeachment inquiry, saying that they're ready to haul in witnesses and get people on the record. Um, that that really was an effort to placate conservatives who are really just uh, upset about the, the spending process. And Andrew, lastly, this CR does not have any funding anything from the supplemental about ukraine or israel or the border or taiwan uh give us a sense as to when we might see those things uh on the floor yeah, look, December really is going to be the last chance for any big Ukraine package in particular. And Democrats and, by the way, some Senate Republican leaders, including Mitch McConnell, really want to group all of those national security priorities together the same way that President Biden wants to, uh, that, that being Israel, Ukraine, Taiwan. But also, for the Republicans, border security is going to be a huge part of this. McConnell has already said that Republicans will not provide the 60 votes necessary to pass any national security funding package without 
border policy changes. Democrats have in general rejected those, but they are coming around to realize now that they're going to have to accept some concessions on the U.S.-Mexico border uh, in order to get these priorities of theirs, namely Ukraine. Uh, the president is asking for $60 billion, which is intended to bring Ukraine really through the next U.S. presidential election. So mm -hmm. that's a, a huge haul of cash, uh, and they're really trying to get it out the door before the end of the year because there really isn't going to be an opportunity to, to get more money to Ukraine uh, before then. And what they want to do is package it all together with Israel and Taiwan and border security, as I mentioned. Yeah, and, and all four of those things, major flashpoints right now, but yet Congress hasn't sent a dime. Always great to talk to you, senior congressional reporter for Punchbowl News, Andrew Desiderio. Thank you for joining us this morning. And